If you're building a house, the nature of the bricks and their constitution will determine to a certain extent what height of wall you can build, but it won't determine the plan of the house. That requires an information input from an architect. Once the houses are built, they will determine to a certain extent how many of them you can put in a street, but it won't determine the plan of the town. There's a hierarchy where there's top-down causation involved because you need an informational input. So one of the key questions faced by modern biology is, where do you get information from? Having tried now for 53 years or so to prove that matter plus energy plus time plus chance and the laws of nature generate information seems to be running into the sand. Perhaps the time has come to mount a simultaneous attempt to show scientifically that you cannot generate information through natural processes. You have some text in front of you. Okay, there's law, there are laws of physics and chemistry that apply to how that ink or toner got applied to, those, to that paper. But those laws of physics and chemistry do not tell you how that, how those, that ink got organized to form meaningful text. I mean, it's, you're never going to get that out of the laws of physics and chemistry. And I, I would say, likewise, we would say, try to understand biology in material terms, and there's going to be something missing. There's, there are going to be patterns and organizations there which you cannot account for in terms of just brute material processes. You're going to need some sort of mind, intelligence, purposiveness uh, that has to be brought into the mix if this is going to work at all. I mean, if life were very simple, if you looked inside the cell and all you saw were little blobs floating around and, and, and it was just, these, these were just blobs of jello, you know, it could easily have uh, originated by some form of spontaneous generation, a little pond with, with lightning flashing. But that's not what the cell is. The cell is the most complicated thing that we find. And not just co it's not just brute complexity. So we've got this whole automated city. Everything is automated. And, and, it's, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a level of nanotechnology which would cause any engineer to drool. Well, isn't that what exactly what evolution is about? It says that the insides of the cell evolved over four and a half billion years, and four and a half billion years is a lot of time. Well, deep time is only going to purchase you so much. I mean, if, if you give, take all the chance in the universe and try to set all the monkeys in the universe typing at a typewriter, the most you're going to get out of Shakespeare is uh, the first two lines of uh, Hamlet's soliloquy. Chance by itself can't get you very far. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Darwin wrote uh, The Origin of Species in 1859, published it in 1859. He had an idea of the cell as being quite simple, correct? Yeah, everybody did. Yeah, okay. If, if he thought of the cell as being a Buick, what is the cell now in terms of its complexity by comparison? A galaxy. A galaxy. A galaxy. What do we now know the cell is? If it's not a lump of jello, what would you compare it to? It's a nano factory. If Darwin thought a cell was, say, a mud hut, what do we now know that a cell is? I would say it would be more complicated than uh, a Saturn V. So what is in a cell? as far as we know now. A world that Darwin never could have imagined. may be the most dynamic. It is one mass of activity going on, bringing information out from across the cell, opening doors, closing doors, motor molecules, motor, actually motor molecules moving along tracks. It is, it is probably one of the most dynamic physical systems in the universe. We've got this whole automated city. Everything is automated. And, and, it's, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a level of nanotechnology which would cause any engineer to drool. It's Broadway, <laughs> without the traffic lights. <laughs>
There has to be a new genetic information. We need information. new genetic information. And where is the new genetic information going to come from? Well, that's the big question. Uh, Darwin assumed that the increase in information comes from natural selection. But natural selection reduces genetic information. And we know this from all the genetic population studies that we have. Generally, we are afraid of mutations. Uh, we don't want to have too many x-rays. We don't want to have Chernobyl. We don't want to have mutagenic substances like uh, uh, asbestos around us. And right. Whatever. So we are avoiding mutations because we know that mutations spoil. We do not know of as any mutation which is positive. So you're saying that the idea that there could be random mutations caused by ultraviolet lights or radiation or some extreme of temperature that would create a new species is simply unknown. Well, that has never been observed. It has never we been observed. We have never observed a change, a genetic change by mutation which produced something new and positive. So, but if that's true, then Darwinism collapses. Yeah, exactly. When we look at any kind of system that we've made that has some of these properties, then we say, well, we're just going to throw in a random variation. What happens to the system? You try that on a computer. What does happen? You just happen? take your program, you take Windows and say, well, I'm going to press a smudged finger here, there, and everywhere, change the program a little bit. It should somebody say, the thing just collapses. It just doesn't function. There has to be a very powerful... Oh, this is very good. So that, for example, if you analogize a computer program to the DNA inside a cell, you can't just change it, it would just stop working. It not only stops working, it crashes immediately. Unless you put tons of, of uh, specially designed protection into the system that can handle random changes. But if you do that, and the cell has that kind of stuff, then the whole idea that the driving force of evolution is a random change, that loses a lot of its plausibility.